Hey guys, today we're going to be taking a look at the TomTuck Vent Pack. And TomTuck seems to be on a roll lately with some really cool new bags. We've looked at a couple of their tech bags and a really great travel bag. So I was excited to see them release a more heritage style rucksack bag, which I'm generally a fan of. And I like, you know, some of the modern touches that they've incorporated into this along with the aesthetic. So in this video, I'm gonna be talking about my experience using this over the past couple of weeks. I'll show you how I've loaded it out, walk through all the features, and I'll also talk about how it compares to some of the other similar bags that are currently on the market. Before jumping into the video, if you're new here, welcome. My name is Danny, and on this channel, we love reviewing popular travel and everyday carry gear. If you like these types of videos and you'd be interested in seeing more, please consider subscribing as it helps the channel out a lot. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and jump in. Starting off with the outside of the bag, this definitely has a little bit more of an old school or classic rucksack style vibe, which I think is gonna work really well in a variety of environments. It's a classic look that's pretty timeless in my opinion, and it's gonna work just as well whether you're walking around campus, exploring a city, traveling, or taking this into the office. As far as the materials, the bag feels pretty solidly built. I believe this exterior fabric is a recycled polyester. It's made out of recycled plastic water bottles and it feels like it's gonna offer a nice amount of durability, some weather resistance, but it doesn't feel as rugged as some of the Cordura nylons that we've seen on TomTuck's other bags recently. So I wish that they would have included something kind of like that, but this does help keep the weight and the price point of the bag a little bit lower, and then you still have some nice YKK zippers all throughout. Continuing along the outside of the bag, I was happy to see that you have two external water bottle pockets, one on each side, and these offer a pretty decent amount of space. In this one, I currently have a 26 ounce Yeti Rambler, which fit in there pretty comfortably. I don't think that anything much bigger than that would be able to fit. Even the 26 ounce Rambler started to struggle to go all the way down to the bottom of the compartment with the rest of the bag filled up, but it does have some elasticity here which is great for adapting to anything that you might wanna store here and for also keeping the pockets a little bit closer to the bag when they're not in use. At the top of the bag, you have a pretty nice carrying handle. I like that this is a little bit thicker. It's got some padding, so it doesn't feel like it's gonna tear and it feels pretty good even when the bag is a little bit more packed out and it's just gonna get the job done for when you need to pick it up or potentially hang it. And then on the flap, you have the new TomTok logo that we featured in the video for the T73 backpack. So I like that this is pretty subtle. It's blacked out to match with the fabric. And up at the flap, you also have a couple of attachment points, which is gonna be a good spot to attach something like a hero clip or any other accessories with a carabiner like a hand sanitizer. One last note while we're talking about the exterior of the bag is that because it has a pretty wide and flat base, it actually manages to stand up pretty well on its own. Moving into the capacity, according to the company's site, the bag comes in at about 22 liters, which is a really great daily bag size in my opinion. I was easily able to hold all the items that I normally like to carry with me and I still had some leftover space. It actually felt like the bag could hold more than a typical 22 liter bag. That could be due to just the simpler layout of the bag, but just an impressive amount of capacity. And I like that even when it's a little bit more packed out, it never felt overwhelmingly big or bulky, which made it great for navigating crowded areas, jumping onto public transit, and carrying on to pretty much any domestic or international airline. Taking a look at the harness system, so far the bag has been really comfortable to wear. I like how the straps have been implemented here. There's a nice amount of padding. It's really soft and comfortable out of the box. On the inside, you have a breathable mesh to help prevent moisture from building up. And these straps also have a nice width to help prevent the bag from digging into your shoulders when it's a little bit more packed out. On the straps, you also have some webbing. That's gonna be a good spot to clip on additional accessories or to also add a sternum strap, which is not included with the bag, but I didn't really think that was a big deal considering the size. And then moving into the back paneling, this was also really comfortable. Same type of padding that we saw on the straps and well distributed all throughout the back. You also have a nice amount of breathability with the mesh and there's also some nice elevation to create these air channels to provide you with additional ventilation while you're walking around throughout the day. Last thing I'll mention while we're on the back paneling is that you also have a nice luggage pass through that's gonna allow you to rest this on a suitcase while traveling to save some weight on your back. Jumping into the organizational options, the bag keeps things pretty simple. On the front, you have a magnetic quick access pocket. This is an interesting idea here. I kind of wish that there had been a zipper as opposed to this magnetic closure. This does work as far as keeping the flap from completely opening up, but it just doesn't feel as secure as a typical zipper. This does make it quicker maybe to get in and out of the compartment, but 
if it happens to rain, anything that you have in here is of course gonna be exposed. So maybe that's something to be updated in a future version. And I wasn't quite sure what to put in this compartment just because it is a little more exposed. At the moment, I just have a portable battery, which is something that I would be grabbing a little bit more regularly and wouldn't be as worried about somebody potentially taking out of my bag. Uh, but good amount of space here, and then it secures when not in use. On the flap, you have another quick access pocket. This one does have a zipper, which I really like, and this also provides pretty good amount of space, even for some bulkier accessories. I was impressed with how much I was able to fit up here at the top. So what I currently have in here is my sunglasses with their case. I have my GoPro. I put in a lightning cable and power brick for my phone. And then I have my AirPods. And the last thing that I have in here is the Tom Bin Ghost Well pouch with some of my tech and EDC items. Moving into the main compartment, this is a top loading bag, so it doesn't open up flat or anything like that. The top is secured with these two adjustable buckles. I really like the fact that these are adjustable so you get a little bit of extra capacity if you have a longer day or if you're traveling. This is also helpful for maybe placing a jacket. If you wanna store it here, if it doesn't fit inside of the bag, then you can just tighten it down when it's not in use. It seems like the straps here don't quite go down enough for when the bag is a little bit emptier. It just feels like there's some space here, which I thought was interesting. Not a big deal by any means. Then you can easily release it. And then before diving into the main section, you do have an additional zippered pocket. It's not quite quick access since you do have to open up the lid to be able to access it. So it's a little more secure for anything more sensitive that you're carrying for smaller items. Currently what I have in here is just a deck of playing cards and a manicure set that I have with me. Uh, it doesn't go super deep. You know, it goes about the length of my fingers. Uh, in here I also have an adapter to charge my laptop, my tablet, my phone. So pretty simple compartment here, no internal organization, but still nice to have an area for those items that I don't want getting lost in this cavernous main area. To access the primary storage area, you have two different options. You can go directly from the top and it has this drawstring closure that I'll take a closer look at in a second, but you can also access it via this zipper that runs along the side. There is a little buckle at the top to secure it, to give you just a little bit of extra protection. It's not locked necessarily, but still prevents the zipper from being opened as quickly. And this zipper gives you access into this same area, but this allows you to access the compartment without releasing the straps at the top. So if you just wanna grab something a little bit more quickly, you can swing the bag around or place it down and easily reach the items that are in this main section. But if you wanna access it from the top, you also have this drawstring which will expand and open up to allow you to fit everything that you need to or to just have better visibility down into the bag and then you can tighten it up and really secure it these drawstrings are particularly helpful with this style of bag to make sure that the sides aren't coming out and allowing water to get on the inside so the flap will properly close and keep all of your stuff protected which is nice and i like that you have a secondary handle underneath the flap this is something I've really come to appreciate about top loading bags is that you can actually hang this up and then just kind of reach into your bag as needed. So sometimes this ends up being like my closet when I'm traveling with this type of bag as I'll hang it up and just reach in and grab my packing cubes and such. And then beyond that, you have just a lot of space here. Unfortunately, you have a little bit of a darker lining. It's not black, but it's still not high contrast. So it can be tricky to see down into the bottom of the bag, especially with me, I have dark pouches and then the dark inside. So I'll do my best to kind of provide some visibility into there, but it's a pretty simple compartment overall. And I like that as it's gonna be able to handle bulkier items well. So what I currently have here is a GORUCK shadow pocket. And then I have an organizer pouch from LowPro that I've been testing out recently. I have another organizer pouch from Alpaca. And then I have my Evergood Civic Access pouch, two liters, which is a pretty bulky pouch. And the last thing I have in here is a packable rain jacket. And even with all of those items in there, there was still a pretty good amount of space at the top. So just super impressive how much it can hold due to the simpler layout. And then with the amount of space that's offered here and the volume, I could definitely use this for minimal travel. If I wanted to toss in a pack and cue, dot kit, extra pair of shoes, I would easily be able to use this for a longer weekend trip. There's no additional internal organization, but on the back you have a dedicated tablet and laptop sleeve. 
and the tablet sleeve feels pretty protective. It's a little bit thicker than a simple slip pocket, which is nice. Definitely enough space for a full size 10 or 11 inch tablet. Currently what I have in here is my iPad mini, fit in there very easily. And then on the back, you have the dedicated laptop sleeve. This one is a little bit thicker, and I like that it has a soft fleece lining on both sides to help prevent against scratching. This compartment isn't pulled up off the bottom of the ground, but it does have padding on the bottom. So even when you place your bag down, it does feel like your device is gonna be protected. And this is gonna be able to hold up to a 15 or 16 inch laptop comfortably. Currently what I have in here is my 13 inch MacBook Air. You can see there's plenty of leftover space at the top. So pulling my device out. Now with the compartment empty, you can get a better look at the inside. And I like that this comes up a decent amount. So if you happen to have a thicker device, it should be able to fit in there comfortably. One note I wanna call out about the laptop and tablet sections is that you don't really have a good way to access them from the side. So even though you can see the compartment, you wouldn't be able to get your devices out. So you'll still have to open the top, not kind of the quickest access, but you know it's still pretty easy to get it in and out with how big this opening actually gets. And with the amount of padding that's offered here, it does feel like your devices are gonna be safe while you're on the go. So really like the simpler layout of this main area, the amount of space that it offers, and just the heritage style vibes of the bag. And if you're looking for something that's a little bit more budget friendly, that's gonna offer a nice amount of comfort, space, and protection for your devices, and this is gonna be a solid option to take a look at. And so to wrap up, it's been a great experience testing out the TomTalk Vent Pack over the past couple of weeks. At the time of filming, you can purchase this on Amazon for about $75 to $80, depending on the color that you get, which feels like a really reasonable price considering the features and the build quality that it has to offer, and it also compares well to other similar bags in this price range. And so as I was testing this out, the first bag this made me think of is the Burton Tinder Pack, which has been one of my favorite heritage style bags of the past couple of years. I still have the original here on the wall behind me. So just something that I've enjoyed using due to the simplicity, the aesthetic, and the Tinder pack was updated pretty recently, so it's a little bit better than the one that I have here. It's got external water bottle pockets. It still has the same sort of aesthetic, simple layout and capacity, and so just a really solid option, very reliable, and if you're looking for something that has this style of bag, but that's gonna give you the external laptop access or just a little bit of a different vibe or more color options, and that's gonna be a fantastic bag to take a look at. Another bag this made me think of is the Fjall Raven Raven 28. You can actually see that one on the wall as well. So you can see that I'm a fan of kind of these heritage style bags in general. The Raven 28 was also updated pretty recently. It has a more breathable and comfortable back panel now and maintains all the things that I've enjoyed from that bag over the past couple of years. It has one of my favorite organizational layouts, separate well padded laptop compartment, external water bottle pockets, at 28 liters, it can hold an impressive amount without feeling overwhelmingly big. It is also offered in a 20 liter size and it comes in at a surprisingly reasonable price point for the quality and value that it offers. So if you're looking for a more kind of heritage style bag that's not a top loading bag with the flap and the buckles in the same way that this one is, uh, then that's gonna be a really great option to take a look at. And then the last option that I'll mention here is the Track Bannock, which is definitely in a more premium price point. That one is made out of a very nice wax canvas, so really durable. It's got the same sort of layout as far as being a top loader with a flap, a couple of buckles. The buckles on that are a little bit different. They're metallic, so they feel really durable, but they can be a little bit tricky to learn to use. But once you get used to it, it's actually really quick to get in and out of the bag. That has a much more kind of simple and classic layout as far as the harness system. It doesn't have the same level of breathability. So I do think that this one is a little more comfortable, but that bag just looks great. It's got a nice organizational layout, you know, two external water bottle pockets, some nice organization on the front, spacious main compartment with a well padded laptop sleeve. And, you know, if you're looking for something that's, you know, got a very nice heritage vibe, a very high quality material, something that's going to be with you for many, many years to come, and you have a little bit of a higher budget, and that's going to be a great option to consider. With that being said, the TomTalk Vent Pack holds up really well against all those options. And if you're looking for a more budget friendly option that's gonna give you kind of a classic rucksack style vibe, but still provide protection for your tech and other essentials, and this is gonna be a great option to take a look at. And I'm curious to hear what you all think of the TomTalk Vent Pack and how it compares to some of the other tech and EDC bags that are currently on the market. And if there's any similar options that you think I should check out, as always, please let me know in the comments. 
And I want to thank the company for sending the bag for me to test out and to you guys for watching and supporting the channel. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any upcoming videos. And we'll see you in the next one.